All right, continuing on Steel and Vance today, we are going to get very deep into what is a national story and an international story all rolled into one. Breaking news this week uh, that has many Canadians very worried. And what we're talking about is alleged interference by the Chinese government into Canadian elections, specifically in 2019 and 2021, and in particular around one uh, MP in uh, eastern Canada named Han Han Dong. So the story was initially broken by Global News investigative reporter Sam Cooper. And people have been talking about this for a couple of months, but we're starting to find out more about the MP, about China's alleged interference. Yep. Uh, the MP in question, Han Dong, is saying, hey, you know, I don't know anything about this, that the Chinese government right? yeah. wanted a minority liberal government, and he was one of the sort of chosen candidates. He said, hey, you know, he strongly rejects insinuations. And this is what the prime minister had to say a little bit earlier this week. Han Dong uh, is an outstanding member of our team and suggestions that uh, he is uh, somehow not loyal to Canada um, should not be entertained. The opposition party is not having it. No, Pierre Polyev, of course, hit back with this. It's clear that Justin Trudeau has been covering up the interference of the authoritarian regime in Beijing. A lot of people saying we need to have some sort of a federal inquiry. Uh, those are the headlines right now. But the prime minister is saying, mm, yeah, that's not really necessary. So we want to bring in the investigative reporter who cracked this sort of wide open. Sam Cooper is joining us now. And Sam, thank you so much for doing this. Thanks for having me. Can you give us sort of the Coles Notes version of what the Chinese government is being accused of? I reported last November that uh, intelligence documents and sources were briefed up to uh, senior Trudeau government officials that alleged that the Toronto Chinese consulate uh, arranged a large clandestine fund transfer to interfere in the 2019 federal election. Uh, this included uh, targeting uh, 11 favored candidates supported by Beijing allegedly. And this was, a, I reported, a, a vast part of a vast subversion operation that it was not only about supporting Beijing's favored candidates, this also allegedly involved a political staff that would report back to consulate officials on political matters. Uh, I reported that uh, uh, Canadian bureaucrats, uh, former politicians, are co opted and corrupted. This is a uh, this is from intelligence documents. And uh, the real a big point of the story is, despite these very severe warnings, which included also the Chinese government uh, networks are targeting diaspora communities. You've uh, heard about these Chinese police stations in Vancouver and Toronto. Mm. And uh, furthermore, in 2021, MPs were allegedly attacked, intimidated. Uh, Chinese intelligence studied them and their writings because they were seen as critics of China. So uh, the point here is that the Trudeau government, I've reported over the past months, has been given warning after warning, and yet Canada lacks uh, modern foreign registry laws or the means, really, to prosecute what is uh, a different than old school espionage. This is about getting uh, people in Canadian governments at all levels that will represent foreign interests. And Sam, for the layperson, somebody who isn't as deeply involved and invested in the news cycle as, as we might be, and certainly you are, in going through all of these documents with a fine tooth comb, we look at this and it was only just recently that we decided as a country to not have China install the hardware for our uh, infrastructure and telecom. I mean, wh who knew what and when did they know it is a big piece of this. That's a great, that, that is a very good point because you're recognizing the strangeness around this decision. Canada's allies uh, essentially came out openly and said this company, Huawei, is accused of being involved in Chinese intelligence operations at a high level. So why would the Trudeau government drag its feet uh, drag its heels for years yeah. when uh, the opposition parties are saying we need to ban Huawei. This raises the question. Uh, it's a very serious question. Could there be people surrounding that government that didn't want Huawei to uh, to be booted from Canada? 
could the, the related case that Canadians know so well, our Michael's in prison in China after the Huawei executive was uh, house arrested in Vancouver, could there be Canadian politicians that were arguing really undercover for China's point of view on that case? Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe based on the documents I've seen and the uh, sources that explain the documents that yes, this is part of Chinese intelligence and influence operations to get Canadian influencers to argue for things such as uh, Man Wanzhou should be sent back to China and not extradited to the United States. It's really alarming stuff. And so it was astonishing to me that the prime minister seemed like, mm, bah, you know, we don't really need to have a public inquiry over this. What did you make of that? Well, uh, to be to be brutally uh, direct here, uh, my most recent story, uh, as you flagged in our in our intro, pointed to uh, an MP that is allegedly a witting affiliate of these uh, alleged Chinese election interference operations. I reported just last week that intelligence uh, reported to me said that uh, a briefing was made to senior Liberal Party officials days before the September 2019 nomination cutoff. And uh, it was a warning intended to give the Liberal Party the chance to uh, heed the intelligence that uh, this member was believed to be involved in interference and pick a new candidate and as I reported, my intelligence sources say the Trudeau government ignored the warning. Uh, so what, what flows from that? Can we, can we raise questions? Another person, a suspect in that alleged case, a major Trudeau government fundraiser, also mm -hmm. said to have uh, the, the capacity to recommend candidates in key writings, to recommend personnel. So could the Trudeau government be turning a blind eye due to the, the capacity of uh, persons to deliver votes to deliver mm. money if they're allegedly connected to Chinese communist operations, the problem could be very, very deep for the Trudeau government. Mm -hmm. And Sam, you were talking about the nomination process and in reading your story, the, the way that people were bussed into this riding with, you know, notes in their, slipped into their sleeves, students who were pressured to be a part of this nomination problem, certainly this flags an issue with how the nomination process works, not even just around this one incident, but or alleged incident, I guess, um, but in a broader sense. But the prime minister doesn't even really seem to be acknowledging that. You're exactly right. Uh, my story was not just about one MP, one urgent briefing uh, before the election. It was about a, a CSIS document that I sourced that said, hey, there's a systemic problem in Canada. Uh, elections are fixed by foreign governments at the nomination internal party level because if uh, if let's say a riding in Vancouver or Toronto is uh, very influenced through community networks and funding networks by a foreign government who promotes a candidate, which is allegedly what happened in 2019 in this Toronto riding, then let's say uh, one party always wins that uh, that riding or for 20 years straight. Look, yeah. the foreign government, if they get their person in, if they bus in people from outside that district and give them fake addresses and say, you're voting for our guy, look, they've won a seat in parliament. This is what the intelligence that I have my eyes on says. And that's a point of the story. I have not heard uh, at all that uh, Prime Minister Trudeau has addressed those very serious systemic issues. Now, to be clear, uh, everybody's saying this wouldn't have changed the outcome of the election in 2019 or 2021. But the reaction from the Trudeau Liberal government, first of all, accusing the pe the critics of, you know, Trump-like tactics, though the election was stolen, nobody was saying the election was stolen, and then to suggest kind of almost playing the race card, anyone who was concerned about this or raising concerns, you be careful because that was stoking anti-Asian racism. What do you make of all of this? Well, we're familiar with that uh, false argument from the British Columbia money laundering investigations mm, yeah. about the Vancouver model and transnational crime. Look, I'll be brutally direct again. It's a Chinese intelligence tactic to uh, label critics of the Chinese Communist Party as anti-Asian or racist. Indeed, my very first story in November talked about the case of a former B.C. Conservative MP, Kenny Chu, who uh, raised, uh, advocated for a foreign registry bill and was uh, targeted in uh, disinformation operations that slammed and painted him 
this China, uh, sorry, Hong Kong Canadian as an anti-Asian racist. <laughs> so uh, I, I need to be very direct here for the prime minister to echo the argument of Chinese intelligence that pointing towards election interference amounts to racism. I, my mind is, uh, can't get around that because mm. our prime minister is echoing a Chinese intelligence argument, whether yeah. he knows it or not. Wow. You brought up the Vancouver model, and there is some mm. news on the money laundering front here in BC that no charges are being uh, laid against what seems like a, a, a open and shut type case, uh, saying there's a, a low probability of conviction. Can you explain to our viewer uh, in the simplest of terms possible um, what is happening here? Right. Your viewers know very well the, the, the Vancouver model reports and how that other major investigation called ePirate fell apart uh, in late 2018. This is about uh, uh, what is clearly a drug trafficking bank uh, handing out cash to gamblers that were flown in from mainland China so that they could take this cash into the casino, get chips and uh, pay back their debts in China. And so, yes, this was a very targeted uh, organized crime investigation much more focused than this major e-pirate investigation. And uh, it has fallen apart, essentially because uh, the special prosecutor said disclosing the, um, the, the huge amount of evidence would be a, a massive chore. Look, it could lead to the same failures of this other investigation where prosecutors made the mistake of leaking documents that could have killed a confidential informant. That was the argument. Uh, so there's one, one issue. The other is the federal law here is that uh, and don't laugh. The federal law is it's illegal to re not register a money loan, a money services business, but it's not illegal to operate an unregistered <laughs> money services business. Wow. So this was the crux of the case. The prosecutor said because the RCMP didn't make the explicit link to drug trafficking cash and called this an unregistered money service business. Uh, the federal law doesn't support uh, in in the prosecutor's view that this there's a likelihood of conviction. I'll tell you this. It, it's an old story by now that Canada's federal laws to tackle transnational crime are, I can't even say they're loopholes. They're pretty much non-existent. So right. we cannot, we can't prosecute very sophisticated international crime in Canada, it looks like. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Sam Cooper, you're so fascinating to talk to. Thank you for doing what you're doing and shining a light in some of these corners. We would never know what's going on. Uh, keep doing it. And thank you so much for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. Sam Cooper, investigative journalist. Boy, oh, boy. He's, he's an author. He is an investigative journalist. Honestly, when people want to slag, and I'm putting my air quotes up, the media... Think about what people like Sam Cooper yeah. have brought and put in sunlight, in daylight to be addressed. Mm -hmm. And we're going to keep talking about yeah. it here on Steel and Bands because we point out when something's wrong. Yeah. Like, and what the hell is wrong with people? How's that for a transition? Because there are yeah. some jerks hitting our playgrounds now. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah. Okay, also coming up, BC entrepreneur, nurse, and international catwalker, Mary Seitz is a model of positivity. She joins us to talk about ageism in the lead-up to International Women's Day when we come back.